Being a wise God and understanding God. God, we thank you for being a powerful God. You still are a deliverer, God. You still are a healer today, God. So we just worship you and we say thank you, God. And we say yes to your will, God. Yes to your way, God. Yes, we will serve you. Yes, we will obey, God. Father, we thank you today, God. We thank you for what you're about to do in this place, God. We thank you right now, God, for waking us up today, God. We thank you right now, God, for keeping us in our right mind, God. We thank you right now, God, for getting us here safely, God. We thank you right now, God, that we have clothes on our back. We thank you right now, God, we have food on the table, God. We thank you right now, we had a little gas in the car, God. We thank you right now, God. I'm thanking you for the little things right now, God. The ability to move my hands, move my fingers, move my feet, God. I thank you for giving me the ability to blink my eyes right now, God. It may not always feel good, God, but you still have given me the ability, God. So I take this time right now just to say thank you, God. I'm thanking you for the small things, God. I'm thanking you for the little things right now, God. The things we take for granted, God. But Lord, we just say thank you right now, God. But now we're going to thank you for the big things, God. We thank you for making a way for us, God. We thank you for providing a way, God. We thank you for finding the ram in the bush, God. We thank you for being that provider, God. We thank you for healing our body, God. We thank you for delivering us, God. We thank you for saving us from the pit of hell, God. We say thank you right now, God. And all of the things that you've done, God. All of the things that you're doing right now, God, and we say thank you for what you're about to do in this place, God. So we ask you, Lord, to have your way in this place, God. Move how you need to move, God. Set free who you need to set free, God. Deliver those who need to be delivered, God. Heal those right now, God. I pray right now, God, anybody that came in broken, that they will be mended today, God. Anybody that came in wounded, God, will know that you are still with them, God. Anybody that came in with suicidal thoughts, God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you take over their mind, God, and let them know that they are loved, God. For we believe in this place that no weapon formed against us shall prosper in the name, God. So we ask you, God, to have your way, God. Consume us like fire right now, God. Replenish in us right now, God. Give us clean hands and a pure heart, God. Renew the right spirit, God, so we can give you the best praise, so we can give you the best glory, so we can give you your best honor, God, because you gave us your best, God. You sacrificed your son so that we can have a right, God. And as we get ready to go into this holy week, God, we say thank you, God, for dying for us, God, for shedding your blood for us, for thinking of a little sinner like me, God, for I once was lost, but thank God now I'm found, God. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for the cross, God. We thank you for your death, God, because it's in your death now. Now that we have life, God, and because we have life, God, we can speak life to our problems. In the name of Jesus, we shall live and not die. In the name of Jesus, we shall prevail. We shall be free in the name of Jesus. You will be healed in the name of Jesus. We will be delivered. Life and death is in the power of thy tongue. So God, I speak life into this place right now, God. Have your way in this place today, God. Move how you need to move, God. Heal who you need to heal, God. Set free who you need to set free, God. Some of us came in blind today, God. But I pray right now that we will be able see you, God, and see you more clearer, God, and see you more better right now, God. We thank you today, God. We honor you today, God, and we worship you, God, and we'll give you all of the glory. We'll give you all of the best. We'll give you all of the praise, God, because you deserve it, God. So we thank you today, God. Have your way in this place, God. Continue to move in this place, God, because you're already here, God. So get us in the right posture, God. Get us in the right mindset to give you our best praise, God. To give you our best right now, God. To give you our best right now, God. We thank you, Lord. We praise your name. And we'll give you the glory forever and ever, God. 
come into this place, God. Sweep into this place. Let your mighty wind come into this place and your presence overflow in this place. So we thank you, God. Have your way, God. Get us in the posture, God. We honor you, we thank you, and we bless your name. Can we give God some praise into this place? Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, I just prayed. We got to give him our best praise. So let's give him our best praise. The Bible says that everything got to have praise. So while we still got breath in our body, let's give him our best praise. Come on, celebrate him today. Celebrate the King of Kings. Celebrate the Lord of Lords. Bless the Lord in me today, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Hallelujah. We give him the glory, God. We give you the best praise, God. We give you the best praise today, God. We give you the best praise today, God. If we don't have any more chance, I want to give God my best. While I still got time, while I still got breath, while I still got the ability to give God praise. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise. continually be in my mouth. Y'all know this song, Oh Lord, we praise you. Hallelujah. Y'all sing that with us, okay? Oh, <laughs> 
this at this moment as we go and worship the King of Kings. He's worthy. Hallelujah. And it's good to sit down and look at the theater and look at um, how a movie is going. And relax and enjoy the movie that's going on because you paid your money. But when we interact with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, he is the creator of every good and perfect gift. It is an interaction where we lift our hands and worship him and give him glory and honor. It's not a time to sit back and relax and hear the music and be entertained, but it is a time to give God all the glory, for he alone is worthy. With every fiber of my being, he alone is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We come to him with adoration, he's worthy. Hallelujah. We come to him with praise because he's worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let's begin to worship him. Lift up those hands and begin to worship the King of God.
Come on, if you sense it, then come on. Come on, if you ain't got no strength in your back, we get ready to upset hell. Come on, today, we gon' upset the flesh. Today, come on, we gon' upset the mind today. Is somebody fight for their life right now? Come on, is somebody that didn't wake up today? Come on, is somebody starving today? Is somebody that's ready to lose their mind today? Is somebody that contemplated suicide today? Come on, get up a little side. Is somebody else here to side? Get up a little side. Get up a little side. Come on, get up a little side. Get up a little side. And if you just step out what you know and dare to step in what you ain't never experienced and dare to step in, come on, what you ain't never heard. If you just step in, come on, in the unknown. If you just step in in the third dimension. If you just step in a place you ain't never been in. Get him up with Osa. Get him up with Osa. So, Father, we thank you. Come on, get him up with Osa. I dare y'all to do better than that. Come on, the Spirit of God is in this world. The same church as usual. The way hell tried to fight me last night and this morning. Get up a little higher. Come on. When you got a calling on your life, come on. And you sit in this seat, come on. The demons are looking strong. Well, come on. They come with a couple of their friends and they... Now I'm praying for that woman, Hidabakurosaya. I don't know her name, but I know her baby was found, Hidabakurosaya, in the water. He was in Nashville with his fraternity, and he didn't go back home. And Father, as I watched that woman crying on the news, God, I just pray that you give her and her husband some comfort right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that you shall stand up in that family right now. Father, I don't know that type of pain, God, but I know, Father, how much I love my son. And so, Father, I'm asking you, Father, if you would just honor all of these people that are standing in agreement with me, that you shall bless that family and give them peace that surpasses all understanding. And that, Father, we don't take any breath any day for granted, God, because we're not promised tomorrow. And so, Father, have your way. So, Father, all the way over in Missouri, that you shall have your way with that family right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We pray that you protect our children. Hit up a little side. In preschool, grade school, Father. In high school. In college and grad school. Protect our children. P protect their mind. We thank you. That we shall use our days wisely. We thank you. That we shall pray with intercession, Father. And pray like snipers that we can snatch any head of the devil. We thank you. That you're putting life in the believer today. Uh-huh. We pray for every grieving mother and every grieving father right now. We pray for those that lost their babies, God. And Father, we pray for those that still have our babies, God. That we don't take their life for granted. 
So have your way for the grieving mother today. Have your way with the widow today, Father. She ain't been without her husband, Father. So have your way with your daughters today. Have your way with the husbands that lost their wives. They said when Jesus was in town and when he was in the room, healing took place. So there's no way we can be in a place like this and not ask God, hit him up with Messiah. Come on, Father, I just need to be healed from my wounds. Hit him up with Messiah. God, I just need my mind renewed, Father, today, Father. The devil tried to play dirty last week, Father. And God, I need some strength today, Father. Hit him up with Messiah. So, Father, do what you gotta do. And in this hour, get up a little sign. That's it. You said signs and wonders and miracles. And I decree and declare that we shall see it in this hour. Come on. Who, who wants to hit up a little sign? Not just keep talking about the goodness of God. Who wants to be able to experience some supernatural things? Who wants to be able to experience hit up a little sign? healing in the room. Who wants to be able to experience restoration? Come on. Renewed minds in the room. Who wants to be able to experience the touch of the Him and His garment? Who wants to be able to experience such a thing? Come on. Hey, we thank you, God. In Jesus' name. Come on. This ain't a time to be cute. Whatever you got, hit up Osiah. Whatever's been trying to take you out, hit up on OCA. Whatever's been worrying you, come on. You better lay it at the throat. Hit up on Osiah. If everybody got something in here, you better begin to talk to God while he's in the room. Hit up on Osiah. Ain't no way, hit him up with Uzziah. I'm going to keep my mouth shut when he's passing out blessings. Supernatural blessings. Ain't no way I'm going to keep my mouth shut when I know somebody needs to be healed. Come on, hit him up, Uzziah. That's it. So God, we thank you. We thank you that you shall have your way. I thank you for covering me last night and even this morning, Father. Hit him up, hit him up, I thank you that the enemy cannot take me out. I was listening to CC Winans fire. She said, release your fire and your spirit upon me. Then I was listening to Hidabosaya. His name just slipped me, but his song was called, Lord, I Love You. Hear the book of Osiah. And I sung it all night. And I woke up singing it this morning. Lord, I love you. I said, Father, let your spirit rest upon me. It ain't nothing like what the Lord hangs around in your house. And walks with you. Hear the book of Osiah. It ain't nothing like when the Lord shows up for you. We will be in the book of Acts, the fourth chapter. Ain't nothing like the Lord. Mm. Yes, God. Uh-huh. That's it. My Lord. That's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let God have his way. Yes, God. Have your way, Father. Uh-huh. What else happened? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What you let them do? Hey. 
soon as I stop worrying about my job, my bills, my family, come on. Get him a put on shot in my help. I'm just gonna let go, Father, and I'm gonna try you. Hey, I'm gonna let God have his way in this season of my life and the next season. Hey, who's at that place today? Father, I just gotta let go. And I gotta let you have your way. I've been trying to work it, Father, and I ain't working it right. Uh-huh. That's it. That's it. I just want to honor him today, y'all. I can't worry about how the story's going to end. God's speaking to us this morning. Get him a put on I let go and I let go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So let go. Uh-huh. Yeah. And let go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let it 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 go.
pokor saya. Yes, yes, no. spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the seducers came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. Verse 4, however, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. Verse 5, and it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas and the highest priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, as many as were of the family of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, uh, <clears throat> by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, and by him this man stands here before you whole. Verse 11, it says, Then, I'm sorry, this is the stone which was rejected by your builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other for there is no other name, say no other name, no other name. under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Hallelujah. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Young people, you all are dismissed. If you're 15 and below, you're out the door. Yeah, you two are very, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, you. There, there you go. Hey, nigga. Y'all gonna be all right. Bless your name, God. The title of this message is, It Shows When You Walk With Jesus. It shows when you walk with Jesus. In this text, we find Peter and John in the temple preaching the gospel in the presence of the priests, captain of the temple, and seducers. These group of leaders became disturbed because they were preaching the aftermath of Jesus Christ raising from the dead. Now, mind you, these leaders believed in old traditions and written laws. There was no teaching of life after death. They were upset because Peter and John were preaching, teaching, and healing out of their scope. Tell your neighbor they were mad because they couldn't understand outside their scope. It, it, it was outside of what they could understand. So they became upset about that. The official leaders were upset because Peter and John were not following their traditional teachings and had the nerve to heal someone that had been bound for 41 years. This was beyond their scope and religious belief. They couldn't explain how in the world these men were able to be so powerful in their speech and were able to work a miracle under the authority and by the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. The name Jesus upset and disturbed them. I'll say that again. The name of Jesus Christ upset 
and disturb them. My Lord, when you look up the word disturb, it means to have a normal pattern or function disrupted. Uh, they were disrupted by the power and by the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. They were disturbed. They, 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 were, they could not function. Come on. It was outside of their guidelines. It was outside of their religious law. They became upset and disturbed that these two men had the nerve to unbound somebody that had been sick for 41 years. Uh, so they, they became upset. They couldn't function uh, in this thing. Peter and John were disrupting their traditions and written laws through their obedience in Christ. I will say that again. Peter and John were disrupting their traditions and laws through their obedience in Christ. They had these religious leaders shook, so they, did, they decided to try some intimidation tactics. I'm here to tell somebody today when you are walking with Jesus Christ and you are under the authority of God there are people that will get together in groups in high places and they will try to intimidate you they will try to lay hands on you because you are moving under the authority and under the name of Jesus you are standing on the Bible and moving in order you have the nerve to have faith and there are people who will be disrupted and disturbed by your faith in Christ. There are people who will be disturbed, come on, and disrupted uh, because of your obedience. They, they were minding their own business and just doing the assignment of Christ. Now, it's my understanding in Jerusalem, there was a whole lot of things that were going on. So how in the world, uh, where is it at? Did, did Adonias, the highest priest, John Alexander, come on, the captain of the temple, the seduces, the Pharisees, y'all all are disturbed under two men that healed somebody? Y'all mean to tell me y'all ain't got no official business to take care because you all are worried about one name. Y'all mean to tell me that y'all getting all, come on, all worked up in the spirit. You're so disrupted because they used one name. They, 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 they were so upset that they decided to lay hands on Peter and John and throw them into prison overnight trying to get in their minds that these elect officials who had earthly power were trying to cause physical and spiritual harm to them. Just imagine you are doing the work of the Lord and you have all these people, the priests, seducers, rulers, elders, and scribes coming up against you at the same time trying to intimidate you in the hour. Imagine you on your marketplaces and you've got all these naysayers, all these scribes, all these Pharisees, all these laws and, and tradition. How dare you get promoted? You ain't been here longer than a year. How dare you get a bonus? How dare you get to go to the meeting? How dare God heals you? How dare how, how dare your marriage is healthy? How dare the glory is on you? How dare? Ah. How, how, how dare the nerve to walk in obedience. I'm trying to help y'all today. The season that you are in is going to require the obedience, but it's also going to require some strength in your back. There are people who are going to be disturbed just because of your existence. There are people who are going to be disturbed because you ain't trying to be in the click. There are people who are going to be disturbed and set up a whole meeting to talk about you to try to intimidate you all because you're following Jesus all because you got the nerve to believe all because you got your popsicle stand your, your lemonade stand and you got Jesus on the side all because you ain't asking them for nothing you ain't asking for no wisdom all because you are walking 
with Jesus. Yeah. So they, they got all these people together and, and these folks tax dollars to go talk to Peter and John about what they were doing. They asked in verse 7, they said, by, by what power or by what name have you done this? Again, by what power and by what name have you done this? They asked the question uh, this way because they understood that the power resided in the name. I, I, I will say that again. They understood that the power some for me I resided in the name. If you decide to put some strength in your back and then again approach things by the name of God, by the power of God, by the authority of God, they will get upset and things will, will get in order. It's a true story. It just happened a couple of hours ago. I, I was I was wrapping up my sermon and then my Apple laptop had the nerve to uh, start doing fuzzy things it froze in the middle of my sermon. I was getting ready to close this thing out and it had the nerves to pop up all of these messages and all of these things. Now mind you, I was sitting with God last night. I woke up with him this morning and I said by the name and by the authority, this computer better get in order. By the name and by the authority, this computer better get in order. God, I'm calling on you. God, shut it off. I wasn't worried about nothing not being saved because I knew I was saved. I, I wasn't worried nothing about that laptop and what the engineers, how they build it up. Baby, I laid my hand on that laptop and said, when you turn back on, my servant is going to be right there by the name and by the authority of Jesus Christ. That thing flipped back on, baby. That Microsoft Word showed up and it was like nothing ever happened. And so, Edible uh, Rosiah, uh, they, they understood by the, they understood the power re resided in the name. They, they may have had the right to ask the questions because they were attempting to protect the Jewish laws and the faith and tradition. They wanted to uh, somewhat uh, uh, make sure that they were not preaching something that was out of the alignment. So they had the right to ask the question. They, they wanted to try to protect uh, their laws and tradition, but where they went wrong is they cannot ask questions under the authority of God. They can't, hey, they can't come up against the kingdom of God. I don't care what your questions are. Baby, if the Bible says one thing, and your traditions and your, your writing and, and your doctrines and your bylaws say another. Uh, I can only worry about uh, what, what, that, what that scripture is saying. So they, they, they were trying to ask a question to protect their written laws. However, they had no right over the kingdom. That's, that's where they went wrong. They had no right over the kingdom. Who, who am I talking to today? Uh, these elect officials, elders, and high priests only stood, under, understood what they were taught. They under Their understanding only took them as far as they can see. So they under, only understood what they were taught. They only understood stood, come on, what their understanding took them and what they can see. They, they had no understanding of somebody that they did not receive. They had no understanding on the life after death, come on, because they were not in relationship. I'm trying to help somebody today. These leaders were upset that they were not in the know of heaven. You ever seen somebody upset about your business? Huh? You ever seen somebody that got the nerve to get all in the tizzy because you ain't talking to them about your business? I'm sorry. This is government official heavenly kingdom business. I'm not in a season to tell you every part. Come on, step of my day. I'm not in a season to tell you why I didn't put it on Facebook. I'm not in a season. To tell you where I vacation at, who I friends with, where me and my husband are going. I'm not in a season to explain nothing to you. I'm only in a season to be where I'm supposed to be. I'm only in a season to serve God how I'm supposed to. I'm only in a season. 
assumptions. I used to have people come to me and say, uh, who is your covering? And it used to get me so upset and insecure inside. And then one day I was laying before God and God said to me, daughter, next time you are asked this question, you tell them that you are cover back God, Jesus Christ, the Lord and your Savior, and your natural covering is your husband. Don't you stumble, don't you stutter, don't you think twice. You are coming and you are standing in Trent County under the authority of God. Huh? Hey, and if I'm going is your spiritual covering? Well, the one we all should be serving. Who is your spiritual covering? Who backs you? Jesus Christ, the Lord, my Savior. Who helps you? God, the Elohim. Who sent you? I am sent me. Who am I talking to? Uh huh. In the book of Hosea, they were huh, they were disturbed. They became dysfunctional. I'm trying to help somebody. You are in a season where you're going to make people walk dysfunctional. You are in a season as long as you yield to obedience and trust God. People are not going to be able to function because they can't see the faith that's working in you and on you. You are in a season. You ain't even got to talk about favor. Ain't fair. You got to have the requirements. First and foremost, you got to be a you believe him above God. God ain't just passing out favor to anybody. He's passing out favor to those that belong to him. I, I ain't got time to try to convince you that favor ain't saying. If there's no favor on your life, that means you ain't truly saved by God. But I can help you today. Just say, Father, I repent. I don't welcome you in my life. I believe that Jesus died. Huh? On the third day, huh? I'm just trying to help somebody. It's okay if they get dysfunctional and they don't want to be saved. It's okay if they want to stay bound in their thoughts and their processes and, and all of these things. That it ain't never been done like that. Uh, we ain't never seen it done like that. It's okay. Yeah. It's, they, uh, if they ain't never seen it, well, you ain't in the know. But baby, I will bless you and tell you a little something. When you get in the know, where is your membership? I'm not required. Anybody got insurance? I hope everybody. Uh, I, I, I'm not required to, to let you drive my car because you're not insured. I'm going to try to help and walk this for y'all. Uh, I'm not required to give you my keys or my credit card because you're not on my credit card as a, come on, authorized user and you're not on my insurance as an authorized driver. So why in the world would I be trying to convince you about what's happening in heaven's business about my life? You're not authorized to use what I'm you are not authorized to walk this with me. You are not authorized to understand what, what he's doing huh, in, in my life. I want to just shut There's no need to shut up no meeting because I'm not authorized to tell you nothing. And it ain't no need for you to do any of that. I'm not authorized. Uh, I don't care if y'all put my name in. In natural jail, Peter and John was not worried about anything. Sitting up in that jail, he didn't care. They didn't care nothing about them laying hands on them. They cared nothing about yes. any of that. They, they they were upset because they were not in the know of heaven business. Yes. They were disturbed because Peter and John were preaching past their capacity of understanding, and the people were believing. They they were mad because their tradition, laws, and degrees could not help them understand what God was doing in that hour. Peter and John were not moved by the opposition. Instead, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm here to help somebody today. Don't allow the opposition to turn you away from your faith. Don't you allow the opposition to take you out of obedience. Don't you allow your opposition, come on, to take you out of the church. Don't you allow your opposition to stop you from worshiping God and serving God. Don't you allow 
your opposition to get in the way of God's authority. Uh, no, don't you allow the opposition. They asked in verse 7, by what power or by what name have you done this? Remember, they knew the power resided in the name. The text said in verse 8, that Peter filled with the Holy Spirit said to them, rulers of the people uh, and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let, uh, let it be known to you all and all to the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ. Now they just got out of jail. They just been intimidated. They got all these elect officials uh, looking at them and they got the nerve to answer. Come on when the spirit of the Lord set upon them they said and by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom y'all crucified my Lord. You mean to tell me you're standing up against every demon and demonic Come on, and have a Nimrod and have the nerve to tell them. Come on, by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one that shall crucify and God raised up on the third day. By the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one that shall stone and God raised him and kept him and covered him. By the, by, by the name. He says. I'm just reading text. Whom God raised from the dead. By him this man stands here before you whole. My Lord, y'all should have been jumping right there. Some of y'all running around here talking about you standing on business. Baby, in this season I'm standing uh, on the Bible. <laughs> Uh, I'll say that again. Some of y'all walking around talking about y'all standing on business in this season. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to stand on who? The Bible. Come on. From Genesis to, to Revelation. Some of y'all like to frequent in Proverbs and Psalms. But baby, I'm going to walk myself through all of that text so I can be equipped for every demon that comes my way. I'm standing on Bible. By what power or what name have you done this? By the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. See, when you move in obedience in the spirit of the Lord, you will never, he will never leave nor forsake you. We must stop giving the people and things of this world credit for what God is doing yeah. in our life. We must stop trying to convince people in this season that you're qualified. Come on. And that God has called you. You must walk yes. in, in, in obedience. I'm moving by the authority of Christ. I don't have time to worry or to be intimidated by this world or the people that's in it. I must stand on the Bible. Y'all can crucify me all day long by the way I walk, the way I talk, the way I dress and what I drive. And by the end of the day, I'm standing on Bible. Y'all can crucify and say what y'all want to say. But by the end of the day, I'm standing on Bible. Turn to your neighbor and say, y'all say what y'all want to say but by the end of the day I'm standing on the Bible and by coming in authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth you got to add the Nazareth in the, I don't care what the enemy does and I don't care what the enemy says I don't care how the opposition comes I'm standing on the Bible I'm standing on, on Bible. Peter and John didn't have time trying to educate the elite of the world. They, they didn't have time to show ordination papers, certification degrees, and zip codes. They just had to move in the, the flow of God. The word says in verse 13, now when they saw the bold of Peter and John and perceived that they were un un uneducated and untrained men. They were marvel. See, there are people in this world because they don't know you and they ain't in your business and come on, this situation room. They may think you're uneducated. They may think that you're 
untrained. They may think that you coming in the flesh and God is saying that he's in a season. He's raising the no names up. He's raising those that have an obedient heart. He's raising those that truly serve him. He's raising those, come on, that will yield unto him. He is raising those that will go into the unknown and to the third dimension. He is raising those that will believe from Genesis to Revelation. I will trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding. And in all of my ways I shall acknowledge him. Come on. And he shall direct my path. I know that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that God is with me as he was with Joshua. I know that God is with me as he was with Deborah. I know that God is with me as he was with the Hebrew boy. I know. Ha. I, I, I know. Hey. Uh, I, I don't care if I don't get invited anywhere. Uh, I, I don't care how y'all crucify things. I know that I've been called by God. I, I know. Come on. His spirit rests upon me. I, I, I know. And he called me to heal the sick, allow the paralytic to walk and the blind to see what they could not see when they were bound. I know that God called me, come on, and gave me authority to help the unfaithful to be faithful. I know that God has called me to help those that are sitting and grinning to get to a place, come on, and be made whole. I know that God has called me to preach the gospel, to teach the gospel. I know that God has called me to lay their hands like Peter and John and heal the sick. I know that God has called me to go spy in the world and tell them what's going on. I know that I can walk by faith and not by sight. I know that he knew me before I was born in the womb. I know he's the Alpha and Omega and Elohim. I know he's the great I am. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah that's all I know. That's all I know. That's all I know. But when the devil started stirring up some things, that, that I just start speaking in tongue in my heavenly language. All I know is that God told me not to be like them and come from among them. Uh, all I know that God so told me to serve him in spirit and in truth. Uh, all I know is that God told me to trust in him and not just trust in chariots and horses. Uh, all I know is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He died on the cross for my sins. All I know, God, is that you have called me for such a time as this to free your people. All That's all I know. Now, this text says, it says, in the book of the and they realize that they have been with Jesus. God has called forth the hour that he's going to separate those who have not walked with him. God has called forth the hour. You're going to know when somebody has 
God is calling forth the hour. There are many pretending to hit a brosaya, have the anointing, but it's a difference of anointing when you are yielding behind the scenes. There's a different of anointing, come on, a different of crowning and, and resting of his spirit upon you when you know your life is holy and real life. There's a different anointing and when you allow God to chastise you, come on, and clean you up. There's a different anointing when you allow God to speak to your mouth in a part in the name of Jesus. There's a different anointing that rests upon you that people would know that you're walking with Jesus. There's a different anointing when you say yes, God, to your way and yes, God, to your will and yes, God, in my worship. There's a different anointing. Some of y'all still sitting down. So either you're not anointed or you can't tap into the spirit. Mother, you can sit down, but everybody else in this building should be standing up right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Hit the book of All I know, if God is calling us to get on one accord, all I know, there's a many lost souls. Come on. Six spirits. All I know, there's many people that are bound in the head of a Messiah, in the things of this world. And all I know is God anointed everybody in this room, come on, to work on behalf of Jesus. There may be opposition, there may be demons coming your way, but all I know, if you're walking with Jesus, it shall show. All I know that if you believe in Jesus Christ, it shall show. All I know in the name of Jesus, a Nazareth is that It says in verse 14, I'm closing out. But see, God is coming up against that old disobedient spirit. Because see, we can't get on one accord and allow the spirit to move. When the flesh has been so comfortable of being disobedient. Come on, the word will cut you. The word will correct you. The word will cover you. The word will keep you. Come on, all I know that God is calling the true believer to be on one accord. All that's it. That's all I know. God is getting this church back in order. Why do I have to? Because if that's what the Spirit said, that's just what we do. It says in verse 14, it says, And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But seeing the man standing with them, they could say nothing against it. This man had been bound. Come on, every elect walked past him and he was sit at the gate and then they had the nerve to walk by them and they had some power in their inner temple and this man was healed and then they got disrupted in their religious doctrine. They got disrupted and disturbed by their traditions because God is coming forth in the hour to disturb the flesh. They got disrupted. They couldn't function in a heavenly realm. You would know when you go to church, when people can't function in a heavenly realm. They, they can get distracted. They can get in their head. Come on. Many times when we're calling off to call, the enemy is immediately working because he doesn't want you to be saved. He doesn't want you to be set free. He doesn't want you to be built up. So he begins to work inside of you. And God is saying that we're in an hour that if you want to be set free indeed and no longer bound when you hear the Spirit of God moving, you better get in alignment with the assignment. God is saying, I am coming back for those 
those that love me. I am coming back for those that call on me. I am coming back for those who are healing unto me. I am coming back. So this is an hour. I'm talking to the unchurched. I'm talking to the non-believer. Come on. You a non-believer if you ain't been believing. Come on. You you the unsaved if you've been living unholy. So today, in this moment, I'm talking to the non-believer. I'm talking to the one that needs to be recommitted to Christ. I, I, I'm talking to the one that has not hit up a Messiah, accepted him wholly. That this is an opportunity for you to give your life to him. Don't find yourself like Adonis and Sapphira. Hit up a Messiah. They were given something and hit up a Messiah. But they did not receive. And what they did not receive was the true spirit of God. And so instead they, they, they went for what it looked like. They held back. They thought they were giving God. They portrayed as if they were giving God their all. But they held back. So you may not be holding back your finances. But are you holding back your walk? Amen. I'll say this one more time. You may not be holding back your finances, but are you holding back your full walk? Yes. Because we are in an hour where people are pretending to follow God. Yes. We, we are in an hour where people are pretending to walk in God's business. And, and God is saying the hour has arrived. So maybe you're saying, you know what, I don't slipped and dipped and I don't, hey, God, I, I, I don't get off of track. I, I've been going off religious ways and traditions that I'm saved and I'm good and grace will work for me. But now, Father, I want to move in the power and have the Holy Spirit fill me. If that is you, repeat after me. Say, Father, I repent. I welcome you in my life. I believe, I believe that Jesus Christ of Nazareth died on the cross for my sins. And with your dutiful power, you raised him on the third day. If you said that, you're just giving your life to Christ. The second thing you need to do is consistently attend a biblical-based church. When you're giving your full walk to God, it will interrupt your plans for His plans. Because God has to fill you in the spirit so you can move in the flow. Because where you are going and who you are attached to, where you work, who your family is, God needs to fill you up. He needs to fill you up. God says, I want to fill you. Get my other water. I want to fill you up. Now pour that in here. Come on. Holy uh, You see how I start bubbling? Hit up a little side. When you let God fill you up, that's something that starts to bubble inside of you. Come on, things start to work its way around in you. When you allow God to fill you up, hit him a Hosea. He begins to work on your mind. Hit him a Hosea. He, he begins to work on your hearing. Come on. And then he begins to work on your believing. And you're going to need 
to be aligned with God in this hour. Say, God, I give you my full will. Father, I give you my full will for my life. I give you full access to my life. So you can do what you need to do. And so they know that I've been walking with you. Give God a seat. your situation. Come on. You are to use his name. You ought to believe. Just look and see. But you don't know. For a week, I like all of these little things in the bathroom, all of the nice toiletries and everything. And we have ran out because I shared a bathroom with somebody. My husband. And, and I was like, man, I gotta go back to the store and get something. My favorite little toiletries. And the Lord said to me this morning, he said, just, you never went to go look to see if you had some more in the cabinet. You accepted what you could not see instead of looking what you already may have. a whole pack of dude wipes right there, huh? You accepted what you could not see instead of going to look what you already may have. And God is saying that you and I are in a season that we need to stop accepting what we do not see and go look for and be obedient for what we are My Lord, I already got it. I already got the keys to the kingdom. Stop accepting mediocre. We're not in a season of mediocre. You all are king's children. And God says, this is going to be your season. If you shall be obedient, this will be your season. Let that rest upon you and believe it. I dare you to believe it. We're going to prepare for tithes and offering. Let it rest upon you that th this is going to be my season. Y'all moving. Let it rest. One second. Just, just lay hands on yourself. 
and just say, this is going to be my season. This, 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 this huh? watch out. I've been walking with them. Did everybody say that? This is going to be my season. This, this is going to be, this going to be my season. Then I'll put your hand on this. It better be your season. It's going to be my season. You need to say it. Hit a couple side. That's right. All right. Everybody, this is going to be my season. One, two, three. This is going to be my season. All right. There are five ways you can give. The first is through the cash app. There's a card on the back. Cash app, simple give, text to give, Venmo app, mail a check, a strong check into Chosen. It has the instructions. Once you have your tithe and offering, now listen, so if you believe, this ain't no pie in the sky. This is, you're sowing on good ground if you receive that word. Amen. Once you have your tithes and offering, please stay. Put it in the right hand so you're standing on the right side of heaven. We thank you, Lord. All right. Say, freely I sow. And by faith, I watch God make my harvest grow. Once you had a please tap. Hit up a little side. Hit up a little side. Make sure you come Wednesday to our Bible study at 7 o'clock. Please make sure you come through. We want to see you in the building for our Bible study. Amen. 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 Now may the Lord uh, keep you and bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace forever and ever. Let every heart say amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week.